what's going on guys welcome back to another video on the aj place channel and today um you know what the off season is pretty much a dead time for mlw however today we are going to be looking at a couple moves that each team should be making this off season to improve their team and ha ultimately have a better result come next season so we are going to get started with the first of the al teams and that is with the pacific predators we're going to start with these guys they missed the playoffs last year and I think we've said it on Warda's uh, Twitch streams quite a bit that the Preds need a power hitter through the draft. With the second overall pick, Warda needs to do proper scouting and he needs to be able to get a number two hitter. He's good on the mound. He's got Cratch and he's got McGlade. And even if one of them cannot show up, Warda as a third uh, option is, so, is not so bad. If your draft pick can pitch a little bit, that's great too. However, a power hitter is the main priority because last year, as much as we say Crouch wasn't as good on the mound, okay, he wasn't the best he's ever been, but he's a good pitcher. If you give him run support in a lot of the games that they uh, the team played, Warda, Russ, McGlade, and Crouch, they couldn't ever get Crouch any proper run support. So the offense just disappeared you need a proper power hitter to at least do what they can to get base hits to get the walks even to get the home runs you need to just fix your offense and that's one of the big things that they need to focus on this offseason next up we are going to continue with the western wildcats this team they made the world series and it seems like every year they seem to draft well with nick sailor in 2020 and jackson pearson in 2021 this year, I expect nothing different. They're going to go ahead and get a, a, a great draft pick with the seventh overall pick like they did last year with Pearson. I think they're going to get one. However, one thing that they I think they need to do is decide on players like Austin Ford, Ryan Kelly, and even their reserves, Michael Aguilar and Zach Purak. You can't have eight guys in your organization one of them is going to need, going to need to go and although they don't exactly get picked up by anybody else if you do drop Aguilar you need to be careful because if he's available another team is going to go ahead and pick him up right then and there if he is available that is because who knows if he's even in the state of Michigan anymore but all I'm going to say is that just if you continue to draft well um, Ryan Kelly's now your fifth guy on your roster. I think Austin Ford may have been a one-year experiment. You never know. Listen, we all love guys like Ryan Kelly, Austin Ford, and Neil Smith. They're great guys, but they're not the best wiffle ball players. Let's just get that straight. Ryan Kelly's been getting better with his hitting. Austin Ford, unfortunately, really hasn't. So with that being said, again, you just need to decide... What players do you want to keep around heading into next season? Next, the Coastal Cobras. Last year, Drew Davis hyped up Brendan Baranowski as the guy who would fix his pitching tandem of himself and either Sean Flynn or Andy Durand or whoever the hell the pitcher was at the time. Drew Davis did actually really well last year. As we've said several times, his ability to actually dial in for game threes and not to bail on the team and his emotions, they never got the best of him anymore. He was very focused and very driven to get the game three win. However, the one glaring issue, Brendan Baranowski. He loved to play Baranowski and give him reps on the mound. The one problem, in my opinion, is that Baranowski's pitching is not what Drew said it would be. He's, his pitches are all very meaty. They go right down the middle. It's perfect for a hitter like Nick Saylor to go ahead and hit. You know, one of these power hitters, they can find them very easily. But let's also say at the same time, Drew needs to plan his innings and his pitchers better because he can't just walk six straight batters and then all of a sudden throw a cold Baranowski in there and then expect him to get out of the situation alive. Doubt that's going to happen and that's going to work. He does have Gus on the roster, which, shockingly, we love Gus. We love Gus. But we're genuinely surprised by how well he did pitching this year. Could he be a number two arm for the Cobras heading forward? Potentially. Doesn't mean Drew needs to play him more. Definitely. 
However, you have the third overall pick in this draft. You can use it to your advantage and go get a guy who, even if he hits primarily, you need a good second pitcher. You need maybe a Dallas Allen kind of player. Someone who can hit the ball well, but he's also a serviceable second pitcher. Beyond serviceable. Like a good second pitcher. Baranowski serviceable. Allen is good. So now let's continue. Metro Magic is the final, t- final team in the American League. In my opinion, these guys don't need to do anything. And the reason why is they traded to get the pitcher that they really needed to project themselves forward next year. They traded for Trevor Bonham. Therefore, they do not have a draft pick in the next two drafts. In my opinion, what these guys need to do, if anything, I guess fixing Liam Jackson is probably the best thing to do because I don't know how available James Swanson possibly is. But Liam Jackson was there for every series other than one this season. There, he is beyond available. And you need to make sure that just in case some of your pitchers are having bad games, you have a good third reliable arm. So if you're going to be doing any training this offseason, which is what the Magic should be doing, their main focus should be training and improving Bonham's arsenal, in my opinion, also Chadwick's arsenal. And you need to just get LJ back on track. He's got to hit the strike zone more than he doesn't. He really needs to walk in and become the pitcher that we thought he would be in 2020. So now we will be moving on to the NL side of things. This is pretty straightforward for Mallards fans. I'm sorry. We keep dumping on your damn team. You got to drop pretty much the next Jimmy Norb. Hitting wise, congrats. Tommy Coughlin hit a couple home runs. Pitching wise, Davenport, you know, he, he'd be a really good backup. But you need a solid pitcher. And I don't know if that's Coughlin, if his, he fixes his mechanics and he's healthy next year. Caden Irwin, if he gets used to MLW again. Or somehow Davenport, who can take that next step. Right now, you don't have any of those guys. You need a Jimmy Norp, a Daniel Schultz. You need a younger one of these guys who can be in the league for a couple of years and get you guys back into the playoffs for this season. You have two draft picks as well. So there's no way you can mess up we are expecting you to get at least one successful pick out of the 2021 MLW draft. There is no way that you mess this up. And if you do, then I'm sorry. I think I think the Mallards would just be cursed at this point. Moving on to the Eastern Eagles. I hate to say it, but with another draft, draft pick and Dallas Allen and Blade Walker both coming about, your top five players right now, Daniel Schultz, Zach Whalen, Dallas Allen, um, Blade Walker, and your draft pick, most likely. Therefore, I think it may be time, unfortunately, that either they're just moved to the reserves and we barely see them anymore, or Clayton Price and Neil Smith. I think it's time we got to bite the bullet, Daniel. Unfortunately, these guys may be your friends, but they're not going to be seeing the playing field that much, are they? I think it's time you finally put the nail in the coffin and you cut. Clayton Price and Neil Smith. Hate to say it because all these guys from MLW, you know, we love to see them. Listen, if Clayton Price was still pitching like he was in 2020, that would be amazing. However, he certainly has regressed from 2020, not even his 2019 injury. He had a really good first half in 2020, and unfortunately, he just wasn't the same last year. Dallas Allen took the second pitcher role, and he has unfortunately fallen out of the Eagles lineup. Neil Smith, however, he's always been above mediocre to mediocre, I'd say. He, we thought he'd break out last season with two home runs in the first like four games, but from there, his bat went cold. We didn't see him much again. So it has to be done, unfortunately. Sorry to Daniel and sorry to the Eagles fans, but it must be done. For the Gators now, Great Lakes Gators, in my opinion, As much as Brendan Zerlai came about last year, you need to find a Dallas Allen kind of player, like I said. A good, reliable second arm, because as much as we love Brendan Jorgensen, he's so back and forth, you don't know which one you're going to get on whatever day. If he's locking in, then it's a different story. 
However, we don't know if he's going to lock in and get the wins he's supposed to get. Meanwhile, uh, on the hitting aspect, Chris Cheatham did not have the best hitting season, in my opinion. Uh, Brendan Zerlag took significant strides. He just won the most improved. How? Who knows if that's going to be sustainable? That's the problem. And Brendan Jorgensen hasn't always been the best hitter. So in my opinion, these guys may be able to hit home runs every once in a while, each of them. However, I think it's time. You, all, you also need to improve on your depth because you only have three guys. If one of your guys can show up, who, who's playing? Bix Beaton? Who knows if he's even around MLW anymore? You need to go get a fourth reliable option. You're the only team right now who isn't suffering from depth issues. Go get a good fourth option. And finally, for the downtown Diamondbacks, there ain't much to do for a team that just had um, one of their players win half the awards at the uh, award ceremony. And you also have the eighth pick in the draft. There really is not a need for anything, possibly. Other than, in my opinion, just maintain team chemistry. Had one of the best seasons of all time uh, last year. Jimmy Norp, fantastic season. There's no need to go draft some absolute legend. And I think the way that uh, Norp drafted Michael Shima last year, there's one guy in particular he should be looking at right now with the eighth overall pick, drafting Nathan Boyar. This was the fourth and final guy out of that Livonia team. Um, back in the 2020 Winter League that these guys played at the Legacy Center in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that, you know, adding him would be a very good uh, chemistry boost. And again, these guys, they thrive off of playing with their friends from what I've been able to see. So I think it would be best that you go ahead and do that. Because if Norp hasn't even reached his peak yet then MLW is going to be run by the Diamondbacks for the next two or three seasons. Hopefully that's not the case. But from what we see right now, the Diamondbacks should be playoff locks for next year. And if they're not, that would be the biggest fall in history. But that's completely up to Norp, what he does with his roster. However, what I think you really need to do, what's going to happen, there's not much you need to add other than Nathan Boyar, a chemistry guy, for your team with that being said guys those are all eight teams um i wish we had more teams but we clearly are not getting an expansion yet but with that being said guys i want to thank you all very much for watching this video if you like what you see then i'm doing a lot more mlw content coming up and also in the past uh we did the mlw season in review jimmy norp tiktok reactions not top 10 mlw plays has done really well i'm going to be doing a lot of content and i think the first reacts video for this year is going to be the diamondbacks documentary video so keep a lo uh, lookout for the next discord reacts i will tell you guys when i'm going to be doing that so you guys can go litter that chat i'm going to turn that into a video i loved making those last year and i'm doing it all again throughout the season with that being said guys i would like to thank you all very much for watching i will see you guys all next time peace out